Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! One of my favorite things to come out of the Legacies expansion was the Pseudo Tribal 5 Wide Battle Droid deck. This was probably my wife Amy's favorite deck in all of Destiny. She loved the characters, she loved the theme, she loved creating the random droid roll in train and saying Roger Roger while she did it. And I got untold kicks how frustrated poor Mike got playing against that deck. It was his kryptonite. Love you, buddy. The deck was never designed to be top tier competitive, but even within FFG Power Creep, it became near unplayable, even casually, by Across the Galaxies. With the creep we've seen since that point, it would obviously need a complete overhaul to bring back the Battle Droid Army to ARH Destiny. But what would that look like in today's era of Destiny? Obviously, the droids would need a power boost in stats, maybe even health, but given how the piddly die characters have historically had significant impacts on the game, would this even be possible without it being too good? So tonight, I'm reimagining Roger Roger for today's game. Let's discuss. <laughs> Hey there, Star Wars Destiny folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando for another Destiny Friday. Thanks for tuning in. That's right. I was getting a little nostalgic this week, thinking back to the good old days of Destiny. Destiny's still alive. It's still strong. But man, did we have a lot of fun back in Legacies. That was, that was a pretty good time of the set. Now, one of the things that my family really enjoyed playing was, was the Battle Droids. We put in a lot of effort, made some sub suboptimal trades to make sure that we could get five Battle Droids at the time so that we could play the full army. Now, the, the way this worked fundamentally, sure, he, he's on the screen right now, six health for six points. You had five of them. He had a gun, two one in direct sides, a plus two, and then two blanks. But if you rolled him in, he had a 50% chance of basically triggering another one. Now, the chance of getting all five of them to roll in at the same time was low. It absolutely happened. We had many nights at Old Chicago where Amy rolled in all five, and all of a sudden you're looking at a boatload of indirect damage. But th this deck inherently was was really great, right, from a casual standpoint. It, it was thematic, it nailed everything on, on the nose, but it had a weak spot in that if you could do AoE damage, right, if you could go white on it, and, and that's really why it ran into problems in ATG, right, is we had Vader, who could just fear dead men, we had Leia Boosh, Padme Boosh was a thing in Convergence, he just ate these little dudes for lunch, they did not make money, no money side, no, I mean, right, all blanks, and... Yeah, I mean that's 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 pretty self-explanatory, right? And but 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 that's why I, that's why I really love this deck, right? Is it it could just come out and it was just marching towards you and marching towards you and it started off pretty strong and as you whittled down the droids, it got weaker and weaker and weaker. But if you were playing it with the right cards like attrition and stuff like that, you were doing damage as they killed you. And at some point, they hit the they they would often your opponent would often hit the point where they. They couldn't mathematically win the game anymore because like, well, if I kill this guy, I die. How do I do this? Right. It, it was a really well done deck with with a lot of weaknesses and checks and balances in play. And it, it, it really, really, honestly, honestly, yeah, I think it's 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 no Raylo. Right. But I think it's one of the flagship design decks of Destiny. Maybe not flagship, but it's it's one of the top. Right. It was really well done. So, like I said, I was getting nostalgic this week and I really proposed the question, man, It'd be fun to see that back again. Well, let's put it on the reprint list, right? Let's put it on Echoes of Destiny. But how would, how would that work, right? Because we've seen, I mean, you know, like I said, these guys were pretty, 
the best use of, let's be honest with ourselves, the best use of the battle droid historically over competitive destiny was as a six point access to red. That, I mean, that was the dude's job playing him with Afra or someone like that. Uh, I, he, he was for a while, he was played with uh, Vader, I believe, right, for red access instead of the stormtrooper. Then he could do him in Solidarity, uh, not Solidarity, uh, Retribution, excuse me. Right, it, it made sense. He still gave you access to red for one point, but then you got pings. It actually kind of probably was a better one minus Intel Convergence, at least, for measure for measure. But I digress, right? So so that that's, and, and there, therein you see the problem. Right is if we were to come say let's let's power creep balance him, him it whatever they power creep the droid for ARH where we are today, what would he look like? Right, should he be a six with seven, six with six, and then need some sort of other ability like maybe instead of after you activate him, right? And and that's that's kind of the issue is it's not just about creeping the raw stats, but if you really look at characters these days, the majority of them do more than one thing, right? They do a thing on activation and they have a power action or they have some sort of contingency and a power action or or any combination thereof. And this dude's just not good enough anymore. But if we were to take him in his template and just say, okay, for six points, we're going to give him something else. Does he all of a sudden find his way into a whole bunch of rainbow three or four wide decks that are just making money and dropping supports and right and then having access to red? So I, I think it's a really very interesting question. So my proposal as it comes up is actually to leave the ability the same. And then we actually take away one of his blanks and give him three, three black indirects. I think that would scale, actually. Now, you start... You're like, whoa, that's that's pretty five damage sides. That's pretty good. Five damage sides with a 66% chance in this case of activation. That seriously changes the math. That's a big deal. But we also need to put in context that they don't have a lot of the same tools, right? So, you know, with Echoes of Destiny, maybe, maybe, maybe they bring him back in some way. Could create new cards around it, sure. But you don't have strength in numbers. You don't have attrition. You have a lot of stuff missing, which, again, could come back. But I think overall, I think that would be the way we scale this up. Now, I am not sitting here proposing that like ARH7, ARH7 has to have the battle droid. That's in, that's, that is it's not what I'm saying. Please don't interpret it as such, right? This is just a thought experiment of how would we take what was a very good, very well-designed deck in Destiny? How would that translate today? And I think in this case, to walk the line between that and crazy that I think that's what you'd have to do, right? Is essentially change, essentially change the EV a little bit, but not much, right? Because an, an indirect is, you know, roughly 0 0.8, right? So you'd be adding 0 0.8 to it without increasing the health. I don't know. But, th but then you really need to ask yourself, would a five wide, thir I mean, 30 health's really good, but if that 30 health's on a bunch of six point characters, is that really even survivable these days with the, the damage output we can see in some games? I mean, you could potentially lose a battle droid, a third and three quarter battle droid in turn one, right? I don't know. So I'm curious what you guys think, right? What, you know, let's let's see the, the, the dream card proposals, right? How would we bring back Roger Roger or some deck similar, right? And maybe it doesn't need, maybe five wide is the wrong answer, right? Maybe we bring back a four wide battle droid. I, I, I do want to, I do want to put a constraint on it. I don't think the right answer is to like have this be an elite character. I don't think that's the right answer because then you're decreasing your health and it's too piddly. Right. And I, then you go into seven and then all the math starts changing. So I think, I think functionally you want to try and do that stupid wide thing because then you can have it be aggressive, but keep it in check with AOE damage. Right. And then everybody has to pack AOE damage and that changes the meta. And that's actually that's actually a good thing, right? That's good checks and balance design. So that's that's kind of the thought. That's what I like. Or maybe we go crazy and we go, you know, what probably the Ewok should have been. Maybe these guys are all four health. Screw it, three health, ten wide battle droids with I don't know whatever. But you guys see where I'm going. So I, I think it's a really fun thought experiment. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking. So you know, let me know in the comments below what are your crazy ideas for bringing back the battle droid army. Also. It was always dumb that this guy was called the battle droid instead of the B1 battle droid. And then when they released the B2, it was the super battle droid. Because we all knew they were the B1, B2. So that's what ARH could do. They can release the B1 battle droid. And then maybe the B2. There you go. And then the B1s with wings, because those were definitely a thing later. 
Anyway, thanks for joining me, folks. Let me know your thoughts. If nothing else, go Commando.